Hey folks, welcome to today's Booth Mini Gathering. Good to be with you, as always. We're going to do a couple of things this morning that sort of pick up on something I touched on last week. One you can see over my shoulder here, I've lit a candle to remind us that bidden or unbidden, God is present. And in just a few moments, Darla is going to be along with some music, so we can look forward to that. And then after that, I look forward to introducing you to a wise acquaintance of mine, who I think has something for all of us. Uh, regarding the way that we live as people committed to the ways of love during the times of a pandemic. So we'll get to that in a moment, but first of all, here's Darla. I love you, Lord. Oh, you must. Darla. It, it does feel a little odd, doesn't it? Um, to have the music made in one place and the talking happen in another and to be watching in yet another, to not be physically sharing space, but to still really feel that desire for connection and for shared experience. 
these are unusual circumstances. I would call them fluid. And sometimes when I find myself in especially fluid circumstances, it's hard to know what the best way forward is. It's hard to know what the best decisions are. And it'd be nice to think that all it would take is sort of a clear worldview or a well-defined set of beliefs to kind of settle that. And of course that can be really helpful, but it's not quite that simple because we still need to take whatever it is that we believe or whatever we believe we believe or have been told we should believe, all of those kind of categories. We still need to start there somehow and translate that into how we're going to act, the decisions we're going to make. And when the circumstances we're in and in which we're enacting whatever decision we make are fluid, fast moving, changing, complicated, all the sorts of things that you know this pandemic can, can be, that can make that translation process really difficult make it hard to know what the best way forward is. So when I get myself into situations like that, or I find myself in situations like that, one of the things that I like to do is go looking for a wise person, somebody who has traveled the path ahead of me in some way. And my hope is not that they could do my thinking for me, that's mine to do and ours each to do for ourselves for sure, but so that their wisdom could inform my thinking and inform my translation into action, inform the decisions I eventually make and the choices I make and, and the way I move forward. Well, today I have the pleasure of introducing you to one such person. This is Lucy Kaikai. Lucy is a parent and an educator. She teaches at an independent faith-based school here in Winnipeg. And that was sort of the context where I first met her. She came along with a bunch of kids from that school to a day camp that um, my family and I used to run on our rural property. And when I first met Lucy, I was immediately struck by her poise as a person, her warmth, her intelligence, and her wisdom. She's an impressive human being in a lot of ways, and I'm so pleased to have made that acquaintance and to have had it continue over the years. This past September, Lucy had her own experience with COVID-19, and she wrote about it. She wrote a short piece about it, which was eventually picked up and published by the CBC, and, uh, and that's where I came across it. Now, in my dream world, I would have Lucy here with me, and we'd get to have a conversation about those experiences, and you would get to sort of meet her and hear her voice and see her face and make your own um, kind of acquaintance with her. That's, that's what I would love to have been able to do, but that's not possible. However, I do have what she wrote, and I could talk to you about it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to read it instead and just get us as close to Lucy's voice um, speaking in our, in our ears as I can. So this is what Lucy wrote about her experience with COVID-19. In the past few months, as we have all faced the COVID-19 pandemic, I have been accused of many things. Of being fearful, of being faithless, of being overreactive. Thankfully, I have not been accused of being hateful or lacking in love. As a person of faith, when assessing my response to the COVID-19 pandemic, a biblical passage comes to mind often from 1 Corinthians 13:13, 13, 13, which says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. The whole of 1 Corinthians is known as the love chapter. It describes what love is and even what it is not. I invite you to read and reflect on it as we navigate these unstable times. This greatest attribute, love, could be our most effective weapon in assessing how we respond to many situations, including this pandemic, but we seem to have lost the attribute of love. We had all let our guard down and enjoyed the lovely Manitoba summer we were blessed, blessed with this year. However, there was a nagging feeling that I was not being cautious enough. My grandmother passed away five years ago at 98 in Canada. She was orphaned at two by the 1918 Spanish flu epidemic, a pandemic, which reached the west coast of Africa where they lived then. As September approached, I decided it was time to buckle down again. With kids heading back to school, common sense told me that infections would rise as they have for generations before and will do for generations to come. My son's birthday, was the second week of September. He was very sad when I told him it was best not to have a party this year, not even an outdoor one. On September 6th, I was invited to a party scheduled for the 10th, 
by a dear friend. I expressed concerns about the virus and she made plans to hold it outdoors to humor me. I told her I was still not sure, but would keep an eye on things and get back to her. On September 8th, my kids headed off to school and I to work. We wore masks and practiced hand hygiene. On the 9th, I told my friend I would not be coming to the party as I thought it would be risky. She was very disappointed. On September 11th, I woke up feeling sicker than I had been in many years. Immediately, I went to see my doctor. After multiple tests and 10 days later, my COVID-19 test results came back positive. Over many days, I suffered from very high fevers, sore throat, muscle pain, extreme fatigue, sleepless nights, and bothersome headaches. As that got better, I was hit with diarrhea and vomiting, which led to an emergency room visit. The headache lingered and my brain was foggy for many days. I have had to isolate in a two bedroom apartment with my two children, fervently praying not to pass the virus onto them. Thankfully, my amazing family, neighbors, work colleagues and friends have been so kind as to provide us with lots of our physical, emotional and spiritual needs. On September 24th, as I neared the end of my quarantine period, I got another invitation to another party. That served as my motivation for sharing my story. My mind went back to the party I would have attended the very day before I fell violently ill. Had I gone to that party, I might have become the infamous super spreader. My actions those few days when I had been exposed to the virus was incubating it and showed no symptoms were crucial in breaking the chain of transmission when it got to me. Had I been ignorant, foolish, and hateful, I reckon over those few days, I would have directly exposed about 75 people and indirectly close to 1,000. As a Christian, I owe the debt of love to all. I have followed recommended guidelines not to protect or save my own life, but in consideration for the many vulnerable people around me. Many people are not ignorant. Very few are hateful. But there's a small bunch of people acting foolishly and their reckless behavior in wanting to keep throwing parties during a pandemic is going to make this a long haul for all of us. My advice is to avoid these people like they have the plague, for they just may. This virus only has power in the hands of ignorant, foolish, and hateful people. In the hands of loving and wise people, the chain of transmission is broken. Thankfully, I have not passed the virus on to the members of my family, and because I avoided social gatherings, I did not endanger the general public. You may not be able to stop the virus from getting to you, but there is a lot you can do to prevent the virus from getting to others. I am so thankful to be able to say that when I got COVID-19, I did not pass it on. I broke the chain of transmission. You can do the same. Wise words from Lucy Kai Kai, something we can all learn from. Thank you, Lucy, for sharing your story with us. I'm so grateful. And thank you all for showing up so that we can consider together how we can bring what we believe into good, loving actions for a better world. We all get to choose in this. Let's choose well. Peace, everybody. We'll chat again soon. Bye for now.